here on GMA. I'm only in Florida because they do have a high risk of rip currents, but no direct impacts from Lee from here all the way to New Jersey. I'll actually be jumping on with the hurricane hunters to get that all important data later today to see when this storm turns north and how much of coastal New England and Atlantic Canada are going to be hit with. So we'll get into the path of Lee, the impacts to Bermuda and beyond. Also coming up this morning, the partner of the American caver who was rescued from thousands of feet below ground joining us live. She was with him when he fell ill and helped save him. You'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. City, of city Council members are making some last minute changes to the city's $3.7 billion budget. What well, you can expect coming up. Plus families across San Antonio are bracing for changes in the San Antonio Independent School District. A look at their plans to close schools and merge classrooms. Quick check of the road with trends, guys. Pretty shot there at I-37 at the Alamo Dome. Things look good on the roadway so far, but we're going to check in with Stephen Cavazos after the break. This morning on GMSA, a woman is behind bars accused of crashing into a San Antonio police officer's unit on I-10. That's what we've been able to learn from the scene overnight. Plus, as we head into cold and flu season, the FDA says some forms of the most popular nasal decongestants don't actually work. We're going to look at why in under 10 minutes. And let's look out there with live cam. A little humid to start your day, but the chance of scattered showers throughout the day. And hey, we'll even take some cloud cover, but we're going to check in with Mike to see what we can expect throughout the rest of the week. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. Happy Wednesday. It is September 13th. We hope you've had a good week so far. I know we've enjoyed the cloud cover, Mike. Very yeah. nice for the past couple of days. Yeah, and these slightly cooler temperatures, you know, it's funny how four or five degrees makes all the difference in the world. It really does. Yeah, and uh, that's going to be the situation again today, just mid 90s. We nice. will have a few more uh, showers and even a couple of thunderstorms popping up later on today. We do have, you really can't see it too well in this uh, vantage point from this vantage point, but we do have some high clouds out there right now. And then up to the north, we are looking at more of these showers, not really a lot lot, but just a you know couple of them out there. We'll take anything we can get. And then also notice how more are developing out there to the west. So we've got this sort of kind of a conveyor belt or the pathway that all these little disturbances are following, which is right up there to the north. And then we'll have a few more coming in as the uh, the afternoon rolls on. And that's going to then give us a somewhat better chance compared to yesterday for more of these showers and even a couple of thunderstorms later on today. As you can see, some of these are kind of drifting southward a little bit. Northern Kendall County, Northern uh, Kerr County right there. Going to be uh, damp on 10, going to be damp on 35 as well if you're heading up in toward Austin. But this is not a huge deal as far as rain this morning. 77 right now, uh, low 70s parts of the hill country. Humidity is okay. It's there. You've got mid 60s. You always want to be below 60. That's when it's really pleasant out there. But again, compared to where we've been in the past, say, week, this ain't bad at all. And we do have uh, somewhat of a heat index to deal with. Not much but just enough out there. It's not as though the humidity pushes back when you step outside this morning. Molds on the moderate side, ragweed low. Of course, the updated count comes out in about an hour and a half. We are going to stay in the mid 70s this morning. A couple of those showers up to the north, uh, somewhat of a lull in the action. Then it starts to pick back up. We'll make it up to 85 today at noon. 94 high temperature today, still three above normal, but that's a whole lot better than where we have been in recent memory and that 30% chance for a few showers and thunderstorms out there. Once again, not everybody's going to be seeing rain, but there will be a couple of pockets here and there. More rain chances, actually better rain chances in a couple of days. We'll talk about that and closer look at the weekend as well. Traffic Authority, Stephen's been pretty quiet. Uh, I've there. had a pretty good morning so far, Mike, and <laughs> drivers have probably had a better morning if they're just waking up and planning on hitting the roads because things are pretty much in the clear. There's 281 at Redland, north and southbound lanes, uh, maybe a little bit busier with traffic at this hour, but always expected. Listen, it's 6 a.m. A lot more people are waking up, getting the day started, hopefully going to grab that cup of coffee, but thankfully no delays. But as the morning commute does get moving, that's when we start to see a few issues that pop up and thankfully nothing major, but be on the lookout guys 35 northbound at Nogalitos. We do have a stall vehicle reported. I did see one of the images from one of the trans guide cameras there. Uh, it's not clear if there's been a Texas hero truck that's arrived to the scene, but anytime you see those flashing lights, you know what to do. Move over or slow down. And as a friendly reminder,
reminder, check those vehicles before you get your commute move in. Taking a look at your travel times again, great time to hit the roads and get the day started. 37 northbound from Pleasanton. It's a pleasant drive for you. 28 minutes at this hour. Same goes along US 90 eastbound. If you're heading in from Castroville this early in the morning and that arrival from Lytle should be about 16 minutes along 35 northbound. Back here again, good shot at 281 at Redland as traffic comes at your screen there. We'll take a closer look at other areas and I'll have another update for you probably within the next 10 to 15 minutes. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman driving the wrong way on I-10 crashed into a San Antonio Police Department officer's vehicle on purpose. Now, it happened around 10 o'clock last night near the I-10 Loop 410 interchange close to Fredericksburg Road on the northwest side. Police say a woman was seen on Transguide driving the wrong way on I-10, and when officers tried to pull her over, she eventually hit another car before hitting an officer's vehicle on purpose. As the police spiked her vehicle and used a pit maneuver to stop her, police say she was arrested for suspicion of DWI. We are learning new details on one of the San Antonio police officers who was shot a week ago. San Antonio Police Department says Officer Jose Bernal Rodriguez was shot while trying to arrest a suspect wanted on two felony warrants. It happened on Iroquois Street on the southwest side. And right now, Rodriguez is still recovering from his injuries. He was a fifth San Antonio police officer shot over a 12 day period. In your morning headlines, we are just days away from a potential strike of United Auto Workers against the big three car companies and negotiations are heating up. The UAW says it's seeing some progress with General Motors, but even a pay increase of 20% is still lower than the union's demand of 40% over four years. Ford reportedly is only offering a 16% wage hike. The union's president says a strike would not cripple industries across America, but the economies of those in charge. The companies want to say that, you know, if we strike, it can wreck the economy. It's not that we're going to wreck the economy. We're going to, we're going to wreck their economy, the economy that only works for the billionaire class. It doesn't work for the working class. The union reportedly wants automakers to agree to cost of living adjustments to protect workers against inflation. The UAW contract expires at midnight on Thursday. Meanwhile, Walgreens says people can now schedule COVID vaccine booster appointments for themselves or up to as many as four people at their stores. Appointments on a nationwide basis start next week, but earlier ones may be added as stores receive vaccine shipments. Now, Walgreens says appointments can be scheduled online or by calling the store. And as we head into cold and flu season, the FDA says some forms of the most popular nasal decongestants don't actually work. ABC's Andrea Fuji reports on the doubts surrounding an ingredient in several over-the-counter medications. This morning, some popular decongestants on the market for decades don't actually relieve congestion. That's the finding of an FDA advisory committee, which says over-the-counter oral phenylephrine, or PE, does not alleviate nasal congestion any more than a placebo. PE is one of the ingredients in Sudafed PE, Dayquil, and Mucinex. It just took some time for more studies to be done in more people to really say with confidence that this drug really doesn't do what it's intended to do. Doctors say taking oral PE is not harmful, but proves to be ineffective because it's processed by the body before it reaches the nasal passages. As of now, drugs containing PE will remain on store shelves as the FDA considers whether they should remain on the market. Currently, the FDA has deemed just the oral phenylephrine uh, to be ineffective, you know, so that nasal spray um, will still be available. The Trade group representing manufacturers of over-the-counter drugs call the decision disappointing. Doctors say it's important to note that the other ingredients found in medications with PE, including pain relievers and cough suppressants, are still effective. So how should you pick a decongestant? Doctors say read the labels. It's always good to look for, you know, 24 hour antihistamines. Uh, some examples, you know, are like Allegra, Claritin, Zyrtec, all of those you know, last for 24 hours, they actually help treat the symptoms, you know, whereas phenylephrine did not. The FDA did not reveal a timeline as to when it will decide if drugs with oral PE will stay on the market. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. And time now is 6.08 and 76 degrees for now. Still to come, a lot of changes are coming for people who buy stuff from Apple. Why the new iPhone could help you with a flat tire before 6.30. 
And after the break, a local boxing gym that's considered a safe place for kids is facing an uncertain future. Why the landlord there is threatening to shut it down. And let's look out there with a live cam. It's a nice morning yesterday with the cloud cover, so hopefully we'll get something like that today. But some of our viewers will get rain and the bigger chance throughout the week. So that's something to be excited for. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's about 612. A local boxing gym that's considered a positive and safe place for teens on the west side is facing an uncertain future. Their landlord is threatening to shut the place down. Our Jonathan Goto visited Cardona's boxing gym and spoke to the owner for their side of the story. It's a small boxing gym on the west side. Well, we opened up last November of last year and uh, we've been here ever since. Previously on Colorado Street, Juan Cardona says they moved for more space. More room to breathe, you know, more bags, so that way we could take in more kids, more, more boxers, uh, just a little bit more freedom in this gym. The boxing gym is facing a serious threat. A man claiming to be the owner of the building wants them out. This guy comes out of nowhere, says that uh, he's a real owner, that the original guy should have never subleased. Uh, now he says he wants us out of here within a week. Cardona says he signed a two-year lease with a person claiming to be the landlord of the building. Good through December 2024. He does want to do a new terms. Uh, he does want to do uh, redo a, a first month's, last month's rent, and another down payment which we shouldn't since we already have a contract for two years. And I believe, you know, doing that, it's just, you know, it's not, it's not fair. The potential closure of Cardona's boxing gym would not only affect its members, but the broader community. This gym has served as a place for mentorship, physical fitness, and an alternative for less desirable activities for the local youth. You know, it's not just for, to learn boxing, but it's also self-control, anger. You know, we have some fighters that, do you have uh, certain health issues that they want to work on? Um, a little bit of everything. You know? Cardona and his staff now confused, but more so heartbroken at the possibility of closing its doors to the dozens of kids they serve. I mean, just thank you for all the support that we've been getting. We've been getting messages from all other gyms, you know, willing to take us in. So yeah, we, we appreciate everybody. He says while the legalities of the situation get ironed out, he hopes the landlord will give them more than just a couple of days to close up shop. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And the time now is 6.15, and from this angle, the roads look okay, but let's check in with our Stephen Cavazos. They look okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm not complaining about anything. Drivers really don't have a lot to complain about either, but let's get a quick look around town. We're seeing a little bit more traffic out there this early. 35 at Ben Zingelman is a perfect example. North and southbound lanes, a lot more folks waking up, and of course, getting the day started. But we can expect to see some minor issues, at least for right now. Let's drive in here to I-35 northbound at Nogalitos. This stall still being reported. However, I'm also also seeing reports of a possible crash. I'll have to get on the phone with our friends at Transguy to find out exactly what's taking place, but it is still being listed as a stall vehicle as of right now, and we're not seeing any delays just yet, but I'll keep a close eye on that throughout the morning. And as a quick reminder here, we will continue to see that drilling work along State Highway 151. That will begin around 9 this morning. It takes us all the way to the end of the work week until 3 in the afternoon, and just keep this in mind. We'll see turnaround closures in both directions at Hunt Lane. Could cause some delays for your commute, but if you scan this QR code, takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page. You know the drill. It has all the lists of the other closures happening in and around the Alamo City and just know before you go. But other than that, guys, it's been a decent start to the morning. But this is that hour where things really start to shift out on the roadways. So. Yeah, I was going to say, don't talk too soon. <laughs> well, I, well, that's <laughs> what I was saying yesterday. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh -oh. Yesterday I was like, oh, yeah, kicking back. And oh, my goodness. It was, yeah, you were uh, busy. Uh, yeah, it was busy. But a lot, you know, just get there safely. We'll watch roads closely. Yes, we will. <laughs> Give Stephen a break this morning. Oh, yeah. no, I, mean, yeah. well, I got it. Got a great support <laughs> here. <laughs> we have got a couple of those showers up to the uh, the north. 76 degrees is where we're going to be bottoming out uh, later on today. And then a little bit better chance. We had a few showers, you know, kind of here and there yesterday, but we do have a better chance for some rain later on today. Not, I mean, not everybody's seeing it, but at least a slightly better shot at that. And also 94 for a high temperature. Not so, bad. I'll take that and yeah. the cloud cover. Even Hot though coffee. it's still <laughs> right? all normal. Hot we yeah, like you said, we definitely <laughs> take that. Love this picture out there, and as you can see, a great looking sunset over there at Woodlawn Lake, and of course, the caption 
Forgot the last time the outdoors felt so good after sunset. Very true. Amen to that. Yeah, I mean, it's just great to be outside now in the evenings. And um, we still have some high clouds hanging around here, which don't actually show up too awfully well. Now we've got these showers up to the north. It is just kind of a broken little batch of rain, which is all sliding off to these. This was a little bit more together just a couple of hours ago. Further on out to the west, we do have a few more showers that are trying to pop up around here. And what we're going to be seeing is more of these, which will then continue to work their way in our direction. I want to switch uh, switch radars here very quickly. And you can see out there if we go to the uh, the Del Rio uh, radar that some of the more of these showers are developing and that's what's going to continue to come on in here. So this is sort of that that pathway that these are going to be following pretty much straight west to east and that's going to be a, a decent chance for some rain, like I said, later on this afternoon. All right, here's what's going on in the upper level steering winds. That's the high that was plaguing us throughout most of the summer. It's, it's weakening. It's well down to the south, and we've got the big trough up there in the Great Lakes. Now, in between, notice how these upper level wind lines are pretty much straight west to east, and it's one of the reasons why those showers and those storms that pop up later on today are moving just about straight west to east. We do see little hints of kind of the roller coaster action up there to the north. And as this next trough moves on in here, that's going to kind of give a little shove to some of these showers. And that's why the better chance for some rain is going to be then Friday night into Saturday as the main brunt of the disturbances and the main chunk of it, I should say, gets kind of shoved in our direction. Then things tend to taper off as we go in toward the latter part of the weekend and the first part of next week. But then by late in the week, another trough is developing. This is the good fall pattern up there to the north of us. And hopefully that gives then another shove to things around here and maybe another shove with with some uh, some cooler temperatures. Here's the uh, computer model going into Friday. And again, that the upper level winds give a good shove to this and push it on through here. And so that's why the better rain chances come in here on Friday. So today 94 degrees and we're going to have a 30% chance. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms around here. Not everybody sees rain, but some folks will get a, a nice little uh, maybe lawn watering this afternoon. 97 tomorrow, still a shower or two, not a great chance. Tomorrow's going to be the hottest day, and then the better chance of rain is going to be Friday, especially Friday night, late into Saturday, and then we clear on out Sunday into the first part of next week. Well, I like that the hottest day this week is 97. I mean, mm -hmm. compared to what we've, we've seen of, the yeah, past few weeks. 100 something around there. Right. So. We'll take it. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. And the time now, 620 and 76 degrees for now. And just ahead, women across the country are sharing what it costs them to be a bridesmaid for their best friend's special day. Some of those crazy stories are next in your GMA First Look. My heart failure diagnosis changed my priorities. I want time for the people I love. My heart doesn't pump enough blood. So my doctor gave me Farsiga. It helps my heart do its job better. Farsiga helps keep me living life and out of the hospital for heart failure. Farsiga can cause serious side effects, including dehydration, urinary tract or general yeast infections in women and men, and low blood sugar. Ketoacidosis is a serious side effect that may lead to death. A rare, life-threatening bacterial infection in the skin of the perineum could occur. Stop taking Farsiga and call your doctor right away if you have symptoms of this bacterial infection, an allergic reaction, or ketoacidosis. More time with her sounds good to me. Ask your doctor for Farsiga for heart failure. If you can't afford your medication, AstraZeneca may be able to help. Farsiga. In this morning's GMA First Look, the runaway costs of being a bridesmaid. This is beautiful. That is gorgeous. Uh, it, um, this is $800. I've collectively spent just under $10,000. Some of the breakdown of that cost is bachelorette parties, room and board, travel fees, transportation, bridesmaids dresses, hair and makeup. Weddings are a 70 plus billion dollar industry. And for bridesmaids, the costs add up quick and are causing some to burn out. For our bachelorette, we went to NOLA and that came out to $1,536. 
A 2017 Wedding Wire report found being a bridesmaid can cost an average $1,200 to $1,800. So how can you keep the bride happy while keeping your bridesmaid's budget in check? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. In your morning consumer headlines, Apple has unveiled the iPhone 15. The latest device has four new models. The biggest change in the new phones is USB-C charging connectors instead of the usual lighting ports. This will also be seen in the AirPod Pro. Another new feature with the Apple iPhone 15 in its partnership with AAA for roadside assistance, it's expanding the emergency SOS via satellite to help when you're out of cell phone range. So whether you have a flat tire, lock your keys in the car, or just run out of gas, the service will be free for the first two years. And Apple is moving away from leather because of its carbon footprint. New cases for phones and bands for Apple Watches will be made with a fine woven. Woven, it is a fabric that, as Apple says, has a suede-like texture, mostly made of recycled materials. And the time now is 625 and 76 degrees for now. So to come at 6.30, San Antonio City Council members are making some last-minute changes to the city's $3.7 billion budget. What you can expect coming up. And a quick check of the roads with TransGuy looking over at this camera shot at I-35. Now looking at I-10 at Crossroads where things are moving. A few more vehicles on the roadway, but we're going to get a check in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. And right now on GMSA, a shooting turns deadly overnight. The police say led to a man shooting and killing a woman at an apartment complex. Plus, understanding needs to be done. It's hard. And change is hard. However, many families across San Antonio ISD are bracing for it. A look at plans to close schools and merge students. And let's look at there with li live cam, 76 degrees, a little humid, but not too bad. Looking forward to some rain chances today for some of us, but maybe even more later in the week. Hi, good morning. Happy Wednesday. We made it to Wednesday. It is September 13th. We hope you had a good week and we hope you enjoyed that cloud cover yesterday. If you didn't get rain, cloud cover, you know, that's was great. That's up there with rain. <laughs> exactly. Even about mid morning walking outside of my car I was like, OK, you don't really feel anything. It was almost kind of neutral, you know, as yeah. far as uh, temperatures. And then even in the afternoon, walking to take the trash out last evening, it was like, wow, I'm not, you know, getting broiled out here and walking across the grocery store parking lot. It was actually tolerable. We are not seeing the glow of the sunrise as of yet. We have temperatures right now. We're still well above normal by seven degrees and like Steph was talking about, there's a bit of humidity out there. Anytime you're above 60 with dew point temperatures, you can kind of feel the humidity. Obviously better than where we've been in recent memory, but uh, we'd like to get some drier air. At least with some of this humidity, it is getting squeezed out in the form of some rain. We do have just a few of these kind of scattered little showers up in parts of the hill country. Don't think we're going to see anything in the uh, in the San Antonio area, but if you're going out I-10, maybe a couple of damp spots on the road, same thing, 35, and there are more of those showers out to the west. We've got this sort of uh, conveyor and this pathway cutting across the, the hill country, and that's where these disturbances are going to be riding in. Then we will have a few more, obviously, as we were talking about later on this afternoon. And so that's going to give us that chance for a couple of these showers right there just to the north of Bernie. Uh, you're seeing a couple of those sprinkles. Obviously, this is not amounting to too awfully much. We do have moderate mold out there. Ragweed is on the low side and this morning couple of those shower storms uh, later on this afternoon and mid 90s for a high temperature. So we'll see a few more about a 30% chance for some rain later on today. Again, not everybody sees rain or most of us won't, but there will be a few of those spots. Now tomorrow, still one or two showers, lesser chances for some rain, and it is going to be hotter tomorrow. We're going to be getting up to going for 97 for a high temperature. So some folks will hit triple digits in your backyard tomorrow. Then the best chance of rain is going to be Friday, especially the late Friday and that's going to be in the overnight hours. Still some lingering showers around on Saturday then and then we're going to start to clear out on Sunday and high temperatures in the low 90s over the weekend. So good looking weekend and some rain.
great forecast. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority still all quiet on it was Mike. Uh, you know, just talking to our friends over at Trans Guy. Check this shot out. 35 at South Cross is probably going to be the best image that they can get for us. Paramedics are arriving to the scene of a possible rollover crash. This is what I was talking to our friends uh, over at Trans Guy about just a few moments ago. You could see that huge backup that's taking place out there. This is uh, po possibly 35 going northbound. We're working to get that information confirmed, but you can see that back to back traffic and again, first responders out there on the scene. This is a very tough camera shot because we're not able to see exactly the extent of the damage out there, but uh, we are seeing paramedics arrive, which is going to be tricky because we have a lot of folks already making the commute. Let's hope everyone's doing OK, but uh, again, that is not a good situation. 35 northbound. We have it labeled right now as a crash. As we get that information, we're going to bring it to you and make sure you have your case at mobile app downloaded. Notifications turned on. We'll let you know about the situation here in the next few minutes. Taking a drive back down over here to the southeast side. It does look like another crash may have come in at 37 southbound at loop 1604. I'm not seeing anything based on the trans guide cameras that are in that area, but I will keep a very close eye on that for you throughout the morning. Giving you a wide look now at 633. Some relief, but we're starting to see the congestion creep in as usual. US 90 eastbound. If you're heading into town, you're going to see some delays there, as well as 35 southbound if you're heading in from Live Oak. But there it is, guys. A US 90 at military. There's a looks like there's some debris that may be out on the roadway. Uh, we'll find out exactly what's going on, but it does look like crews are working to sweep that up at this hour. Uh, there's a lot going on. I have to talk to Transguide about, so I'll be back with another update here for you in the next few minutes. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Detectives will decide whether a man accused of shooting and killing a woman should face criminal charges. Police say the man is claiming it was self-defense. Katrina Weber is live downtown with more on that shooting, which happened late last night. And Katrina, what have you learned about what led up to it? Well, police have not released a whole lot of information because their investigation is still on ongoing, but they do say that it possibly happened during a fight. They found the wounded woman around 9.30 last night at an apartment complex in the medical center area on Chambers Road. That's not far from Fredericksburg Road and Medical Drive. Police say she was rushed to a hospital but died later. It seems officers were able to speak with a man there at the scene. They believe there may have been some sort of fight or assault in the parking lot just before the shooting. And again, he told them it what happened in self-defense, but they still have not shared exactly how that man ended up pulling the trigger. Again, all this still under investigation, and so far it does not appear that police have made any arrests. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A San Antonio man who was shot and survived is calling on the person responsible to turn themselves in. Edvierto Fernandez says his concern is not just for himself, but his young children. His life changed on August 23rd when a stop to pick up his kid's mother ended in a fight with someone else. Fernandez says that's when the suspect shot him while he was still inside his car. The woman he was in the car with finally managed to drive Fernandez to JBSA Lackland for help. No one else was hurt. Fernandez says he knows the suspect. However, San Antonio police have not identified him as a person of interest or a suspect in the case. What if my, what if my kids were in the ICU and all of that? Thank God I'm the only one that had to go through this. Fernandez spent six days in the ICU and doctors have not removed the bullet that hit him. San Antonio police say when the suspect is caught, that person will face at least one count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. A dog owner whose dog attacked a neighbor is now facing criminal citations. This is connected to an attack on Hildeberg Street one week ago. San Antonio police say the dogs crawled under a fence and into a neighbor's yard. Investigators say one bit a 46-year-old man on both of his arms and stomach. Animal Care Services say that the owner was cited for the animal bite and for having two loose dogs off the owner's property. Now, ACS took both dogs in for quarantine last week. However, investigators have since determined one of the dogs was not involved. That dog has since been returned to her owner. The second dog is still in quarantine. San Antonio Police Department says no charges have been filed, but that it's still an open case. The Bear County Commissioner's Court has approved a new $2.96 billion budget. It focuses on improving public safety and paying its employees more. The budget funds 50 additional law enforcement positions. It also starts a new performance pay program where employee salaries could go up, up to 5%. And there's a lot more in the county budget. You can read more about it and the city's 
We have that on our website at kset.com. The city budget. Council members are trying to make some last minute changes to the city's $3.7 billion budget. And some of the changes include expanding a new mental health team. Others include more money for San Antonio Animal Care Services. City Council is also looking to create a fund that could help with travel expenses for women seeking legal abortions outside of Texas. They will meet today to finalize that list. And looking ahead, San Antonio ISD is moving forward with a proposal to consolidate schools. Last night was the last of 14 meetings with the community to explain why the district needs to, quote, right size. The district says that lower birth rates and the rising cost of housing has pushed them to consider closing campuses and consolidating students. Staff will now take input from the community to form a draft plan of which campuses will be considered for the closing. School board will be the first to hear the plan next week before 14 more community meetings. Well, in the meantime, many parents that we spoke with say they feel optimistic. At the end of the day, I mean, as long as there's schools available, whether it's here or another place, and as long as everyone understands why, I think it'll be okay. Another round of community meetings will explain the recommendations before trustees vote on the plan on November 13th. If approved, the right sizing plan goes into effect in the 2024-2025 school year. And happening today, Lanier High School is celebrating 100 years. This is from 5.30 to 7.30 this evening. The celebration will be inside their main building at 1514 West Cesar Chavez, East Chavez Boulevard. Now, six original SAISD junior high schools are also celebrating 100 years of educating San Antonio students. Lanier was originally opened in 1923 as a junior high campus. And time now is 639 and 76 degrees for now. Women earn almost half the PhDs awarded in this country but only have around 12% of patented inventions. Just ahead, how one group is hoping to inspire change for the future. Welcome back at 642. This morning, we are learning about a group working to empower the next generation of inventors, well, specifically female inventors. As Alexa Lorenzo reports, they are tapping into potential, showing them how they can change the world. She's really caring, sweet, and she's a good person. Gabriella and Daniela Torres are the best of friends. Help each other's homework, tell each other's secrets, hanging out. Gabriella is very protective of her big sis, who was diagnosed with hearing loss when she was just six. I gotta be protective to, like, to make sure no one hurts her. Daniela now hears with a cochlear implant, but continuing to make life better for her sister is what motivated Gabriella to become an inventor. I knew she always had to get woken up by my mom every morning to go to school. So I was like, that's why I made the vibro blanket. With her vibrating blanket alarm clock, Gabriella won an international inventors competition by Metal USA. Getting young girls interested in inventing is the first step to changing the dynamics in this male dominated field. The U.S. Patent Office says that females face more difficulty securing funding and have a lack of social network that is critical for financing. Other barriers women face, gender and racial biases in degree choices, hiring practices, work evaluation and promotion. These are the Smart Glasses 3000, super cool captioning glasses for deaf people. At just 10 years old, Genevieve Myers is determined to change the field. I did these like um, glasses that caption um, when somebody speaks. Genevieve gained international recognition for her idea. I just kind of like grew up thinking like everybody should be included. I'm Alexa Lorenzo reporting. And time now 644 and a big slowdown out there at I-35 at South Cross. Let's check back with Steven. Yeah, I was just talking to our friends over at Transguide about this situation. 30, uh, 35 northbound, you're going to see delays there. This is a major rollover crash that's been reported, and you can see a blob of flashing lights out there. Heavy first responder presence, and earlier we did see paramedics arriving at the scene. Uh, no word yet on the extent of any injuries. We hope everyone's okay, but traffic's not looking great, guys. We at least have two lanes that are blocked, but it could be a little bit more than that from some of the reports that I'm seeing. Traffic that's navigating through that area seems to be experiencing some delay and obviously we're going to see that reflected right there on our map. So right now we have it listed at three lanes that are blocked due to this rollover crash. If you're heading northbound, 
be on the lookout there. Unfortunately, not the only issue that we're tracking this morning in the lab as we take a drive over here. US 90 always seems to be something going on there. Earlier we showed you a shot of first responders or some sort of crews cleaning up some of debris out there. Looks like that may be some spilt milk according to our friends at Transguide, but it's not causing any issues with traffic. Just be on the lookout for that. But I do have to take another drive right over here actually as we give you a wide look at the map. We do have another crash at 37 at 1604 that our friends at Transguide were able to show us. We'll get that on our Transguide cameras here a little bit later on, but uh, yeah, pack some patience. Let's hope everyone's doing OK out over here at 35 at South Cross. This is just before Division Avenue, and you're going to see that backup for a little while, especially now that we've entered morning rush. Not a good situation. But again, around the same time yesterday, mm -hmm. we saw problems. Really? Yeah, we had problems pop up at 630, and it's the same song and dance this morning. So after a yeah, quiet yeah, early morning, yeah, after a quiet morning. So I hate to use that for the drivers, but we'll get you through it. All right. Thank you, Stephen. All right. I had a space station flyover, and if you have a big enough, powerful enough camera, long enough lens, you can actually see the space station. This is a great, great shot. As you can see, the two white rectangles, if you will, those are the uh, solar panels on the International Space Station. I think uh, Oscar's got a really good camera right there. And uh, yeah, that's just very impressive and right in the middle. And that thing's about a football field long, the actual space station itself, which you know, you'd think is quite big, but in celestial terms, that's actually kind of small, but yeah, but very cool looking picture. Thank you very much for that one, Oscar. All right, take a look outside right now. We do have some clouds still hanging around here, starting to lighten up a little bit. Still about so oh, half an hour until the sun peaks over the horizon and going to be a nice looking sunrise again with some of those clouds hanging around. We do have a few uh, showers up to the north, just the, you know, a couple of little scattered ones here and there. These have been sliding pretty much straight west to east. A few of them there in northern Kendall County, maybe even taking a little bit of a sort of a southeastward path. You're going to run into some of those if you go over, uh, go up I-35, I should say. And then further on out to the west, we actually have a few more of these. So we've got this sort of conveyor belt that's going to be taking these little disturbances and throwing them in our direction throughout the course of the afternoon. Mid 70s on average all around the area. Still here in town, we're seven degrees above normal. We've got those few leftover showers this morning. A little bit of a break in the action. And then rain chances pick back up the afternoon, mid 80s at noon, 94 high temperature today. A whole lot better than where we have been, but still three degrees above normal. We'll take it though. Here's the uh, computer model. And again, as we go into later on mid morning or late morning, early afternoon, the break in the action here. And then on that conveyor, that west to east conveyor belt right there, we get more of these disturbances moving on in here. So we'll have a couple of more showers, a couple of more thunderstorms that are going to be developing late this afternoon into the evening hours. We'll also have to be on the lookout with this conveyor belt working its way across the area for some of these nighttime complexes to uh, develop once again, kind of like what we had last night and the night before that. Jump into the future Friday, the better chance for some rain, and we'll kind of get that instead of west to east flow, it's going to be a north to south flow. That's going to take the main batch of rain and put it on through here, and that's going to be late Friday night into early Saturday. The question being, will it have a big impact on Friday night football? Still, some long-range computer models are got different solutions to this. Some bring it in later in the evening, some a little earlier. So we'll still have to be watching out uh, for that as we get closer to it and kind of narrow down the timing of it. But uh, as of right now, I'd kind of find an umbrella just to have it <laughs> handy in case you need it for Friday night. And then we'll have some leftover rain on Saturday. Look at that low 90s on uh, nice. Saturday, 93 on Sunday with more sunshine around here. Well, I always have an umbrella in my car and mostly it's for wishful thinking, but well, <laughs> yeah. now we can actually use it. But in this case, uh, Friday, well, even this afternoon, you might need it mm -hmm. as well, but uh, for Friday night, and we'll uh, get that narrowed down as we get closer to that. All right, we'll be prepared. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Time now, 649 and 76 degrees for now. Let's look out there with live cam, or at least in this shot. No rain, but a pretty shot of the sunrise. We'll take that. 76 degrees for now. We'll be right back. Streaming now.
um, we're about five to 600 bucks a month on, on water usage. Their water bill more than doubled from one month to the next after a pipe sprung a leak. We, we had a break, uh, the ground movement happens all over San Antonio. A few weeks later, we get a bill in the mail for a million gallons of water, $15,580. That's just ridiculous. They've been bullying us, intimidating us. Now Saw says it's time to pay up or have the water shut off. KSAT investigates the water company's policies on outrageously high bills. Streaming now on these platforms. Good morning, coming up here on GMA. I'm only in Florida because they do have a high risk of rip currents, but no direct impacts from Lee from here all the way to New Jersey. I'll actually be jumping on with the hurricane hunters to get that all important data later today to see when this storm turns north and how much of coastal New England and Atlantic Canada are going to be hit with. So we'll get into the path of Lee, the impacts to Bermuda and beyond. Also coming up this morning, the partner of the American caver who was rescued from thousands of feet below ground joining us live. She was with him when he fell ill and helped save him. You'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. And coming up today on GMSA at 9, we are getting ready for the Big Give. It's a 24-hour online fundraiser for local nonprofits, and it's happening next week. However, there's a way you can give in advance today. Our Tiffany Huertas will tell us how the money raised will impact hundreds of nonprofits in our area. So tune in for that and much more today on GMSA at 9. And time now, 6.54. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Well, unfortunately, things have not improved here, Steph. As we get a look there at 35 at South Cross, take a look at that shot from Transguide. We do have uh, multiple first responders that are out there on the scene. Traffic back to back due to this rollover crash that was reported earlier this morning. And you can see that traffic has only grown, and that's why we're seeing major delays in the area as folks are making their way out the door, likely heading northbound along I-35. Again, no word yet on the extent of any injuries, but we did see paramedics arrive to the scene a little bit earlier this morning. It's a tough situation to navigate, but be on the lookout if you are heading northbound. We're going to have at least three lanes that are blocked there. Another area that we're keeping a close eye on is right over here at 37 southbound at loop 1604. A crash right near that intersection. It's not causing major delays, but I do see flashing lights out there. We'll keep a close eye on the morning, but it does look like we also have a spill over here along US 90 westbound at Military Drive. Mike. Got a few clouds hanging around here and some clear Clear skies. You can see a little bit of orange from the, uh, the sunrise. Still those few showers up to the north and off to the west. And uh, we'll keep a couple of these around this morning. And then we'll see more later on today. 76 right now. 72 Bernie Stage. 76 also at Canyon Lake. 94 high temperature today. Again, a few showers, a couple of thunderstorms around here. An okay chance for some rain. And kind of a lull in the action. Hotter tomorrow. And then the better chance of rain late Friday. Well, even if I don't get rain today <laughs> in my area, I'll be happy with the cloud cover. Yeah, oh, true. Yeah. In those mid-90s. Yes, mm. very good. We'll take it all. Uh, hope you guys have a good day, but we'll see you back here at 9.